God, he holds the victory. Yeah! There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Come on. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from the grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. 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 We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing it again. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Come on. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Come on. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your Shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. How are we doing today? Hey, Christ is risen. Amen. Risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Still is <laughs> the next week. Hey, thanks uh, for so many of you that came and joined with us last week. We had almost 2,000 of you on this beach celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Uh, God is moving here. We're going to get to celebrate baptism today. Uh, Caitlin Cox is here uh, from the Midwest and going to be baptized at the end of the service. We'll also be uh, celebrating uh, communion uh, at the end of the service. We're so thankful for our team that mobilizes and helps make this happen week in and week out. Can we give our hand real quick to our volunteers? We just appreciate you guys. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you've been around here for a while and this kind of feels like home and you want to get connected kind of on ramp, uh, we have a, a thing called the Welcome Table uh, coming on April 10th, which is this uh, coming Wednesday. I uh, would love to have you join us for a meal. If you're interested in that, just write Welcome Table on your uh, connection card and turn that in at the end of the service. Uh, just to re remind you as well, on the front side of your lyric card, the colorful side, there's a number, 844-525-8878. If you'll text the word Crab Trap to that, you'll just be looped in with our uh, communications um, let me pray for us and we're going to continue to worship. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come and declare um, what the heavens declare, your glory. You are glorious and you are risen. And because of that, we have great reason for hope.
Um, God, we thank you uh, that you have opened the heavens to us through the work of Jesus on our behalf. And we celebrate you right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Revelations 4 says, At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These were the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. Their third had a face like a man. The fourth was like an eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. sing that again. It's our declaration. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water. Such a With all 
is and is and is to come. Hallelujah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Heavenly Father, we stand before you grateful for the love, mercy, and grace that you pour on us every day. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for our health. We pray that you move in this place, that miracles happen for your glory and your glory only. Touch the hearts and the minds of all of us. Let us be blessed by your word, dear God. We love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, real quick, uh, wave at me if you're a local. Locals in the house, awesome. Wave at me if you're a vacationer. Good to have vacationers with us. Hey, let's, uh, let's welcome our online folks with a howdy on the count of three, two. One, two, three. Howdy. Good morning. Hey, well, welcome to week one of a four-week series called In Destin, As It Is in Heaven. Um, if you grew up around church, uh, the language around the title of the series might sound a little bit familiar to you. Um, I don't know if you can imagine peering over the shoulders of Jesus' disciples, how amazing, how scary, how wonderful it would be to see what they saw. They viewed up close and personal the power and the authority that Jesus walked in. And after observing his life, they drew a direct correlation to the power that he walked in and his prayer life. And so they boldly asked Jesus, Jesus, teach us to pray. Walk us through prayer 101. And Jesus gives a preface in Matthew 6 about the inward posture of prayer your intended audience. Don't pray for others to see you. If that's your motivation, for other people to think that you're spiritual, then you've got your reward in full. Instead, pray in private with your heavenly father as your audience of one and he will reward you. And when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, pray like this. Now, I normally read from the New Living Translation. For, for this passage, we're gonna go old school because that is probably the language you're familiar with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so this piece of the prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. That's the idea, uh, that's the idea behind this series in Destin as it is in heaven. Uh, pastor Allen and I, our lead pastor, were meeting with other uh, local Destin pastors last month uh, as we plan for the upcoming Destin Week of Blessings. And when we're considering a theme, Alan blurted this out, in Destin as it is in heaven. And that resonated for us sitting around that table. Partly because of some difficult deaths of youth that our community has experienced in the last few months. But also um, that many consider Destin a slice of heaven. I mean, people pay ridiculous amounts of money to travel halfway across the United States to experience our beaches for a week. I mean, has anybody driven over the Destin Pass with the tide coming in lately? It is spectacular. I can remember uh, all the way back to 1987 when I was 11 and coming across Okaloosa Island and seeing these white mountain-like sand dunes and seeing the emerald green waters and like, I thought, I'm home. I wasn't home. I was from Texas, but I'm home. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in heaven. And this series is rooted in this idea, not just that we think Destin is a, a beautiful, spectacular destination to live in, though we do. 
but that God wants to bring his kingdom and his will to bear across all the earth, but also here in Destin. Now, I want to acknowledge that um, while the understanding of heaven has played a significant part uh, in Christian theology, that has been challenged by the Enlightenment and secularization and kind of modern cultural thought. Uh, you can hear that culminating in John Lennon's lyrics, Imagine, which he finished writing in 1971. You're probably familiar with these lyrics. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Before we jump into the scriptures, to catch a glimpse of heaven, I want to share um, just a thought from a 20th century thinker, um, C.S. Lewis, um, he wrote in The Problem of Pain, that book, he wrote this. He said, creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for those desires exists. A baby feels hungry, so there's such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim, well, there's such a thing as water. Men feel sexual desire, well, there's such a thing as sex. If I can find a desire in myself which no experience in the world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. If none of my earthly pleasures satisfy it, that does not prove that the universe is a fraud. Probably earthly pleasures were never meant to satisfy it, but only to arouse it, to suggest the real thing. Now we did a, a little bit of a poll uh, on Facebook this week, just asking locals, um, heaven in one word, what would you say? Heaven in one word. We heard this, Jesus, wholeness, peace, magnificent, glorious, beautiful, eternal, pure, indescribable, I didn't chime in, but if I were to chime in, mine would be home. Heaven is home. Um, I'm not sure what your word would be, but let's hear the word of someone who has seen a glimpse of heaven. In I, Isaiah chapter 6, um, we're going to see a movement. We're going to come back to Isaiah 6 every week, but there's kind of a movement that we're going to see that we're going to play off of. Week 1, we're talking about heaven. What is heaven? Week two, there was heaven on earth. That was Eden, but that was fractured and marred by sin. It was busted up. And then Jesus came on a rescue mission to restore us. And there's ultimate restoration that's coming if you read the end of the book. And so God's going to reveal himself here to Isaiah and Isaiah 6 in the midst of a national crisis. What was that crisis? Well, the king had died. Uzziah was the king, and he was a good king, and he reigned for 52 years. And the haunting headlines were this, will the next king be a good king? And so we understand that elections have consequences, but the people of Israel didn't get to vote on the next leader, and he would have a lifetime appointment. So let's read Isaiah's journal entry in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. If you have a Bible, you want to open that up. Or if you have an app on your phone, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. And he was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, these angelic beings, each having six wings. And with two they covered their faces. And with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew, and they were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. And then I said, It's all over. I am doomed. For I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live amongst a people 
with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it. And he said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. And then I heard the Lord asking, whom shall I send as a messenger for the people? Who will go for us? Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. And so in the midst of this national crisis, Isaiah has this vision of heaven. And central to this vision is a throne. And the creator, the sovereign ruler of the universe sits on that throne. And he is not unsettled by the things that unsettle us. He is not unsettled by the things that unsettle us. Almost every time you see a vision of heaven, or you hear a vision of heaven, there is talk of God's throne. Now, atheism says there is no throne. Humanism says that man sits on the throne, but the scriptures say God sits on the throne. That God is omnipotent. That the throne of God's authority is not one among many, but it is high and exalted. That God's throne is higher than every other throne testifies to God's supreme power to exercise his authority. There is no opposing power to God that can veto the decrees of God. What he purposes, he accomplishes. And so when Jesus prays, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we see heaven is the place where God's will is done perfectly. And we long for that reality within our lives. Like, amen? Yes? Yes. And we long for that reality in our world because you know what? God's will is good and it is perfect. As we heard earlier, the Apostle John also caught a glimpse of heaven in Revelation chapter 4. Roberto read it earlier, but I'm going to read it to you again. It says, I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. The one sitting on the throne was brilliant as gemstones, and the glow of an emerald circle circled his throne like a rainbow. Twenty-four elders surrounded him. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their head. From a throne came flashes of lightning and rumbles of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. In front of the fl- throne was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. And you know what the song of heaven was? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. And that that moment depicted by John never gets old. The scriptures say day after day and night after night, they keep singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It doesn't get old. It doesn't get familiar. The thrill and the majesty of being in the presence of God Almighty never gets old. Like we have a hard time understanding how even things of exquisite beauty cannot become common to us over time. Now you may not be the best crowd to ask this because you're at church on the beach, but if you were to ask locals, there are many people that never go to the beach that are locals. Like it's just gotten common. They've been inoculated the incredible beauty of the Destin beaches. 20th century uh, pastor A.W. Tozier had this to say about wonder in heaven. Culture is putting out the light in men and women's souls. Our entire culture has become dull. Dullness is the absence of light, the absence of wonder, the absence of of heaven. And so God, we pray that you would reveal yourself 
in ways to us now that would never allow us to lose the wonder of who you are. Now, there's this characteristic of God that's central to this vision of Isaiah and of John in Revelation 4. It says, And they were calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy. Like the most breathtaking thing about these angels is not the appearance of what they look like, though they're described in spectacular fashion. But what's truly breathtaking is what they say, that God is holy. And, and holiness at its root, it means to be set apart. So what, what is God set apart from? He's set apart from creation. Because the Lord is not a creature. He exists outside of creation. And it's not just that he's smarter than any other man or stronger than any other man or older than any other man or better than any other man. You can't measure God in comparison to man. He is divine. God is holy and his presence compels worship. These angelic beings were created to be in the presence of God. And yet they are riveted by the holiness of God that they can't take their eyes off of him. Just like you would be glued to the TV if your team is in the final four and the game comes down to the last possession. Like you're riveted in that moment. You can't take your eyes off in that moment. The thrill of being in his presence the best thrills on earth will never compare. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13 says this. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. C.S. Lewis talked about the importance of this part of the Christian life, not to lose sight of heaven. He said this, a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not, as some modern people think, a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but one of the things that a Christian is meant to do. It does not mean that we are to leave the present world as it is. He says, if you read history, you'll find out the Christians who did the most in the present world were those who thought the most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think about the other world, they have become so ineffective in this one. He says, aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you will get neither. If heaven is such a beautiful, wonderful, awe-inspiring, perfect place, how can we don't experience that here and now? That's where we're going to go next week, so we'd love to have you uh, come back with us. But I just want you to know, you have an opportunity, even today, to be connected to God and the reality of heaven. The scriptures tell us this, that um, we all fall short of God's glory. There's a, there's a measuring stick, and that measuring stick is holiness. It's what God uh, demands of his creation. But the reality is we all fall short of that. Can I... Anybody fall short of your expectations for yourself this week? All right? So if we fall short of our expectations, surely we fall short of his. And so that leaves us with a fractured relationship between us and God. But Jesus stepped in and came on a rescue mission. A number of years ago, um, I went to the pool with my uh, youngest daughter. And I told her, hey, rookie cookie, um, stay on the steps. Don't, don't get off the steps because I had my clothes on and I was just sitting there watching her. And uh, you know what she did? She got off the steps and she was flailing and she was over her head. You know what I did? So I told you not to get off the steps. <laughs> That's not what I did. <laughs> I ran. As I'm running, I'm shedding things off of my body and jumping in to get her because I love her. She was in need, and I came near. And the scriptures tell us 
it's kind of the same thing with God, that God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, in the midst of our mess, Christ died for us. What an amazing, what an amazing gift that he would come and lay down his life, die, rise from the dead so that we could be connected to eternal life. The scriptures say this is, a, this is a gift that's offered to you and you access that by faith and you might even do that today. I want to invite you to bow your heads and let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. God, we thank you for the gift of your love poured out on us, even though we don't deserve it. God, we receive that by faith. God, today we just confess to you that we are sinners and we fall short of what you call us to be. We thank you that your love has been shown to us through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And God, today we believe in you. We, we, we trust you and pray that you would cleanse our consciences of sin, of the residue of shame. God, that we would be a holy people. God, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, we get the privilege and honor to celebrate uh, what Christ has done on our behalf uh, today uh, with Holy Communion. And so the Lord Jesus tells us that on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave it thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave it thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. Father, we pray that you would uh, pour out your spirit upon those gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world your body, redeemed by your blood. God, in this moment, we pray that you would make us one with you and one with one another in ministry to the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we're going to invite you to come forward if you'd like to celebrate communion. There'll be two stations up top and then two down here uh, on the sand. Um, if you'll come forward just with your hands open, we'll place uh, bread in your hand and then take the bread and dip that in the cup and partake of that. And then if you'll go back to your seats, um, we've got a couple of announcements. We're going to introduce to you Caitlin Cox that's going to be baptized and then we'll, we'll do a benediction. Welcome to come forward. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling you. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Hey. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. 
From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior is in He Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Just a couple of quick uh, announcements. Then, uh, Katie, if you'll come on up. Um, just uh, if you'd like to give and support this ministry, you can do so as you exit. Our ushers will have uh, buckets that you can you can put place offering in, as well as your connection card. And then um, if you're online and you want to give and support us, you can do that at destinmc.org. Uh, we've got merchandise available up top. And if you want to take pictures of the cross, one of our friends will be back here uh, to take a picture with your camera. Uh, Rick, small group today? Yeah. Small group. Uh, if you'd like to join Rick uh, over here at that pavilion, they would love to have you join them. And... Katie, it's a privilege to have you here with us today. I want to ask you a couple of questions, okay? Um, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Yes. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present, present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord? I do. Awesome. Let me pray for you. Um, Father, we thank you uh, for Katie and the work that you are doing in her life. God, we pray that you would pour out your Spirit upon her and that you would connect her to your good and gracious plans. God, today we come to the waters of baptism to celebrate uh, your work on her behalf. God, we love you and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, friends, I'm going to invite you to join us down by the water if you can. If you can't, uh, be blessed. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and may he grant you his precious gift of peace. Guys, we love you. Have a great week. Yes.